someone asked, do you have any advice to deal with sugar cravings? And you're a sweet tooth guy. You like sweets. How, how do you deal with it? Man, so this is a completely separate discussion from everything we talked about before, which is uh, not related to physical health, body composition, consistency around nutrition, and is purely using nutrition as a mechanism to do something else on a emotional, mental, spiritual level. That said, deal with sugar cravings. Um, number one, I, I don't fight them. I plan to have within my calories and my macronutrients. I plan to have foods that are sweet and delicious and that I enjoy on a somewhat regular basis. I'm not restricting myself in terms of only eating clean foods, except for this next year. Yet. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, number two, um, I like relying on artificial sweeteners to a degree. Right, I like a mm. little Splenda in my coffee. I like uh, certain Greek yogurts that I can't believe they have 80 calories, 12 grams of protein, and somehow taste like a dessert. Um, mm -hmm. I'm okay with, you know, not in excess, but low calorie, artificially sweetened snack options. Um, getting enough protein, being properly hydrated. Uh, setting up your life in a way where you are are as unlikely as possible to have any kind of cravings, sugar cravings being one of them, meaning get enough sleep, get high quality sleep, like do all the right things around your room, temp, darkness, sound machine, phone before bed, blue light, do all of the standard stuff that we've talked about before. Um, try to set your life up in a way where uh, – I, I mean, sleep is is the anchor. Sleep and like how your day is set up, the food you have in your environment. You know, we know that if you have a bowl of peanut M and M's out on the counter compared to a bowl of apples and pears and peaches, that you're far more likely to grab the snack that's there, whichever it may be. And so, setting up your environment with foods so that you're not uh, giving into that craving. Those, those, th that's a handful of my best ideas. Great ideas. I'll, I'll just add one because I love, I love all of those. The one that I'll add is there are some people that just, they have this feeling that they just can't say no or that they can't have it in moderation. And for those people, the, the idea in their mind that like they just can't say no that's what we have to overcome first is the feeling in their mind that they can't say no to it, which is why for some of these people, I'll be like, listen, like all I want you to do is for one night, just one, don't have any sugar, don't have anything sweet for just tonight, just, just one night. And if I, cause early on in my career, I'd be like, Hey, let's take like two to two to four weeks off. That's a, a much bigger challenge. But if I just say, Hey, just for tonight, don't have dessert just tonight you're not gonna die it's not there's no you can't use fomo it's just a regular night at, at your house don't have dessert just don't do it and then the next day they wake up and they have that amazing feeling that you and i were actually talking about the other day mm. where it's like they're so glad that they didn't have it mm -hmm. and for the first time in maybe their entire life they're like i can't believe i did it like I can do it. They prove to themselves that they can do it. And the point of this exercise isn't to say that they can never have it. The point is to make them realize that they can not give in to that craving, that it is a choice. They do have power over that, which then sets them up for so much success down the road because now they, they believe that they can do it. They just proved to themselves that they can. It's something similar that I would do this with uh, with calorie counting. There, there are most people I like a more moderate calorie deficit, but sometimes I like a very strict, severe calorie deficit for especially for people who are very overweight and do not believe they can succeed. Because oftentimes, if you give them a more moderate deficit, there are many issues with it. But sometimes with these people, is they're either they're they're going to go over like it's it's a moderate deficit they're like ah oh, screw it they're going to stop counting they just end up going over they don't take it seriously 
So sometimes I'll give them a super big calorie deficit, like 800 calories for like a week. We're just going to do one week at 800 calories. And people are probably freaking out. It's like, there's actually a lot of research around this if we want to dive into it. But um, what's crazy about this is when you have them on such a strict deficit just for a week, they have to be very strict with their counting. And they take it very seriously. And they're like, okay, which foods are high protein? Which foods are going to fill me up for lower calories? Okay, I can have a lot of vegetables. I can have a lot of tuna. I can have a lot of eggs. I can have a lot of this. I can have a lot of chicken. I can have a lot of this. And then when you bring them back up to a more moderate calorie deficit, they have all these skills that before they didn't have. Mm -hmm. They know which foods are high protein. They know which foods they actually like that are relatively low calorie and very high volume. I'm not putting them on 800 calories for six months. It's a week where it's just like, it's strict enough to be like, all right, I'm going to do this. And they get really intense about it. And then they, they learn from that experience. So it, similar to going back to the sugar cravings, sometimes having just one night where you say, don't do it tonight can be enough of a catalyst to just prove to them. I can really do it. Like the, the ultimate goal is moderation, but that's an advanced variation. Moderation is an advanced form of dieting. Like being a, a flexible dieter is like the ultimate dieter that we want to become. Mm -hmm. And just like ideally, I want people people to be able to do a full ass to grass squat. I'm not starting off with that for people. I'm not starting mm -hmm. them off with an ass to grass overhead squat. Starting off with a, a goblet squat to a box, mm -hmm. right? So let's start off with different variation prog and progressions to see what works well for people. Excellent point for for people listening and especially for coaches working with clients who are beginners in their uh, like understanding of nutrition and nutrition for fat loss specifically. So very well outlined. Thanks, brother. <laughs>